Hi everyone, it's Rachel and Anthony. Hello. From Don't Crop Me Now. It's the last Sunday of June, so it's time for our monthly plot tour. So we're going to start on plot 2B. And plot 2B is where we have the polytunnel and the fruit area. And quite a lot has gone on in this polytunnel over the last month because we have planted it all out. This tends to be the last job that we do because we just are so busy at this time of year. So a lot of the plants that are in this polytunnel are not that big quite yet. So let's start by looking at what we've planted in the polytunnel. And in the main, this is a mixture of cucumbers or cu similar plants to cucumbers, aubergines, peppers, a few and a few leftover chilies that we couldn't quite fit in the chili house, which we'll show you on plot 5B. So here we've got a range of, on this side, these are cucumber plants. I know they look a little bit yellow, but that's just got a bit of transplant shock and they will pick up no problem over the next week or so. Here we've got something that's a little bit more unusual. We've got a plant here called an achoka. They're not gonna stay in this bit here because obviously we will need to be able to get in to harvest the cucumbers. But I'm just putting them in these, these pots in the middle here just because they're out of the way. And this is a plant that's sort of similar, I would say, in taste to a green pepper, but it grows on a vine a bit like a cucumber. We've grown these before, actually, and they tasted brilliant, but we didn't get a brilliant crop because they sort of set a little bit late in the season. So I will be keeping this pot within the polytunnel and see if that makes a difference. Another one we've got here, this tiny little plant, is a cucumelon. And it's only just about starting to grow well. It will need some sort of climbing structure, as will all of these cucumbers. And at the back here, the ones that are looking slightly better, these ones are luffers that you can dry to make um, sponges, essentially, natural sponges. So that's this bed. They're all similar types of plants. If we look over here, we have got some aubergine plants. So we've got some aubergines here and just to Anthony's left, there's a couple more aubergines. And we've decided this year to plant most of these plants in these sort of ring planters. And these are sort of usually used on grow bags. The reason why we've done this is it makes it really easy to water because once the plant's established, it's really clear where the base of the plant is. And you can water into this section here rather than actually on the base of the plant, which quite helps if you get... Um, pests and diseases particularly those fungal diseases so um, we're gonna we've decided to do that for all of the plants or majority of the plants in here this year this one is a gherkin plant and again that's going to need some canes to grow up I've just left it like this for now because we've only just planted them and everything in here needs a good water for today these ones on the front here are just a miniature type of basil they're a Greek miniature basil they are quite intense, it's quite licorice really in flavour, it's a strong basil, but they're small plants and they'll grow well in these containers in front of the other plants. The tree here, the apricot tree, is looking quite good. It is sending up some nice soft new green growth. So we are going to have to, sometime later in the season, get that tied in and prune off some of these upwards growing branches which we won't want for next year. We have the three giant onions in pots and I'll be perfectly honest, the ones outside are just as big. I think they probably need more watering than we're managing to do, but you know what? It's still worth it for as an experiment, so we will keep those ones growing. On the other side here, there's a couple more um, aubergine plants just because we couldn't fit them in the bed. So again, those pots won't stay there because we will need to access the plant, but they're just for ease of space at the moment when everything is small. So all of these ones here are pepper plants. Most of them are the long type of pepper, a variety called Marconi, which has done very well for us in the past. And on here, these ones are more peppers. And on here, these four are just the overflow of the chili plants that we have planted in the chili house. And these ones are in the self-watering containers. We did do a video about planting up the chili house and we will link that in the description. And then that talks about these uh, self-watering planters which we have invested in for this year which is new. There are a couple of hanging baskets with tomatoes in. You know what they're not looking amazing but they are starting to pick up and this one in particular is full of flowers. We have decided for this year to not put any tomato plants except from these hanging basket ones into this polytunnel 
because it's quite difficult for, for us here to really water with tap water. We do have access to a tap and a hose, but obviously that's limited because it's a communal allotment site. So we tend to use the majority of our own water that we have collected. And to be honest, that always just brings in the blight, whether it's in a greenhouse or a polytunnel. So I've decided just to grow these because I'm hoping that they will set some tomatoes before the blight decides it's going to set in. Despite it being so dry for, here, for us here in South Manchester, to be honest, I mean, I've not looked at the data on this, but I doubt we've had more than an inch or so of rain probably in the last couple of months. The fruit is still looking pretty good. I have to say that I think we're going to have to give things a good water. Like if you look at this apple, for example, that's in a pot, it's really quite bone dry now. So we are going to have to start watering a lot of these potted plants a lot more regularly, I think, if the weather decides it's going to stay like this. But the ones that are in the ground are doing pretty good, particularly the fig, which is absolutely covered in fruit. There's a few cherries on the cherry tree. This tends to happen every year. The birds get them, but I just leave them and let the, 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 the birds enjoy them, really. And on the other trees, there is definitely small amounts of fruit. For example, here, you can see on this small apple tree that it does have these little fruitlets. If you are finding that your apple trees and your pear trees are starting to drop fruit at this time of year, that is completely normal. This is called the June drop. And basically what happens is, this, particularly as those winds get up a little bit, the small fruits will drop down and it's the plant's natural way of thinning out how many fruits it's got at each section. If you find that your plant is not dropping down, if we go back to this plant again, so you can see, for example, here, there's only two fruits close together. But if we look here on this, there's three fruits in that little bundle. If you find that you, after the June drop, you have got more than two at each section, it's a good idea just to take off one of those fruitlets. And this will let this little bunch of apples here fill out a lot more readily. Now, if we have a look into the polytunnel, we were talking a little bit about this lack of water and how much it's been a bit of a problem. Actually, yesterday we came down and I saw these blueberry bushes and they looked terrible. I actually thought we're going to lose this. They're going to drop all the berries. So we gave them a little bit of water with a watering can last night. And you know what? The berries have plumped back up. It looks like they've picked back up again. Here you can still see there's a little bit of wilting on the soft green growth. And what we've tried to do to really give these a good water is we have this hose here that we've been left for quite a bit of time over the pot just to really quite soak what we have in the pot. I know this seems a little bit crazy. I've just said, haven't I, that we don't tend to use the hose. But this hose is actually connected up to our one of our IBCs. And that's why it's coming out at this really, really low pressure like a dribble. But it means that we can just leave it there soak these pots properly and that is rainwater because even if we could manage to do a bit of watering with the hose on these blueberry plants i didn't really want to use the tap water on them i mean the other plants are probably not so bothered so we're leaving this here for a good half an hour on that sort of dribble on each of these pots to really hopefully rehydrate those and if we go further into the poly, um, polytunnel the fruit cage you can see the rest of the fruit again is doing quite well but some of these parts, here's an example here, you can see that this, this young black currant bush, it's got lots of little black currants on, but that is very dry. It needs watering, and that's something we're going to have to look at today or tomorrow. These strawberries have done surprisingly well. As you can see, these were actually runners, but they've set a lot of fruit. And these type of strawberries, I'm not sure what the variety is, we've got them off another plot holder, but they tend to be these quite small berries, but they taste absolutely delicious lovely so if we look at the rest of the fruit cage everything's doing pretty good really it's sort of berries everywhere we will need to start getting around to picking some gooseberries quite soon and as you can see they are just ripening up the ones on here are a red type of dessert gooseberry and they're looking good and behind me here we have the red currant jungle the whole thing in here is absolutely laden with red currants. We are going to have to do some sort of pruning on this area because it's a little bit mad. What I will do is, as I pick some of these berries, I will cut some of this um, 
uh, cut some of the older wood out and probably a little bit of the new wood as well just to try and prune these down to a smaller size because as you can see we are lost on this path at the moment. The last thing that we'll look at here is this plum tree and you know what we have got some plums set on here not a massive amount but if Anthony goes in here there are definitely some plums. This is a Victoria plum tree and we actually transplanted this into this area where we put the fr fruit cage together um, this is the second season for this. So you know what, we didn't get any fruit on this last year because even though it survived, it got a really bad frost. So this year, that's I'm pleased we've got anything to be honest. So that is really positive. So we're now over on plot four and plot four is the main plot. It's the plot we've had the longest and it's where we grow the, the majority of our annual vegetable crops. But we do have an area here at the top of the plot, which is a bit more of a social area. So in front of Anthony, obviously you can see there's quite a lot of tools that need to put, be put away. But we also do have this pergola, which is a nice bit of shade. And the flowers on this pergola are just starting to grow now. We do have a few more flowers, like for example here in some pots. We quite like to do that just because it looks quite pretty. These have not liked the dry weather, but they are starting off now and we are watering things as regularly as we realistically can. Let's have a look at, this is the first bed that is on plot four. And we do have a lot of parsnips. Some of these were sown directly and some of these were started in toilet rolls and transplanted. And they're looking really, really healthy. I do find that these long root crops tend to be really drought tolerant. Just here as a divider between the two crops, we've got some dwarf sunflowers. These just look nice and look pretty. And as you can see that some of them are starting to flower. They tend to grow probably around four foot, three to four foot really. And it makes a nice divider. And they are quite nice also as cut flowers. The carrot bed, I have to say, is not doing amazing. We have one really good row of carrots, and I think I said in the last video at the end of May that I needed to re-sow here because I'd let the seeds dry out, dry out. Because of the dry weather, I've just not bothered to do that yet. I was waiting really for this onset of rain. But I have cleared this, and I am gonna sow some seeds either today or tomorrow. We find that carrots sown in June actually do really well, much better than the earlier sown carrots for his. For for us here in South Manchester. Now if we have a good look at this bed behind you, it's the observant of you amongst you that have been following our videos may remember that this bed was completely filled with garlic. Well unfortunately that garlic crop actually did get rust and we've had to harvest that earlier than we would have done. We have got some garlic, I'll show you that it's just currently drying in the greenhouse on 5B. It's not amazing but we do have a crop and we will utilise that in our kitchen. Behind that, we've just got a few courgette plants and these sunflowers are actually some giant sunflowers. They're called Mon Mongolian giant sunflowers and they're the ones that are used in the world record attempts for the tallest sunflower. We've had sunflowers that grow well above the height of that tree. I can't even remember the height of it, but probably up to about 12 foot or so, haven't we really, on, um, on the plot. So I'm not sure how they'll go with that so we say not brilliant support of those three canes, but there were spare sunflowers that didn't fit in our main sunflower area. So I just popped them in there. Now, if we look behind here, we've got a few more flowers. Again, not doing amazingly because of the drought. You can see one here that actually completely got a bit slugged and then it died off that marigold. And that's just because it's been so hot and dry. Behind here, in the rockery area i put some cosmos in and as soon as we get that wet weather i'm sure that they will pick up they will completely fill this area and make it look really pretty and cover up all the um perennial rockery plants that are underneath that look great in the spring but not so great really in the summer one thing that i'm actually quite pleased with that is looking quite nice is our little pond and if we have a look here you can see a lovely flower on this miniature lily, which is really nice. The water isn't completely clear, but it's okay. It's not bad. I have set up this fountain here. If Anthony comes around the front, he'd probably get a better view. Um, I need to reconnect that frog up 
that will run as a fountain. I just need to get some more of a tube in because it wasn't long enough to get the full height on top of the water fountain. So thanks for my brother who gave us that. And I do think that's gonna look really great in the long run. So talking about the sunflowers, we do have more sunflowers here that grow up this structure. It's tied into the tree, so it's pretty sturdy. These are giant sunflowers, but they are a red type of sunflower rather than the Mongolian giant sunflowers. But again, hopefully they should grow pretty tall. As you can see, if you look under this uh, Bramley apple tree, you can see what I was talking about earlier when I was saying about that June drop of the apples. So there are quite a few small apples that are starting to fall or fall off. However, if you look at this tree, it's absolutely laden with fruit. And this is really good because last year we got hardly any apples because of the late frost. And as you can see here, we are getting that two apples at each sort of cluster, which is really good. But in a few weeks, we will have to have a good check on that. Make sure we thin down where necessary so we can get some really large fruits from this tree. One thing that I am really pleased with is this lavender border, which is looking and smelling absolutely wonderful. We had a good tidy up on this because the plants had grown so big, they were falling right over the path and we couldn't get through. So we tied it up and put a few canes in to support the plants to stay upright. And this side looks particularly good. On this bed, we've mainly just got some broad beans at the moment and they are setting fruit pretty well. Um, we put them in later actually than people often do for broad beans. They were sort of late spring sown broad beans and the plants are looking healthy so we should be getting a crop from those quite soon. At the moment there's nothing in this area here. There are a few areas where we will be sowing seed. For example where we pull the garlic out and here we put some late sowed crops in. Things like beetroot and some extra carrots as well. On this side, you can see some of our, uh, I call it our main crop of potatoes, but we tend to sow second earlies here because of the high risk of blight. Even though we've been talking about we don't get any rain, we do usually get a lot of rain and we will be getting rain that will be coming quite soon, I should imagine. And we did not support these potatoes very well. We, we, it was a bit late for us to get the support structure on this one. And you'll see the difference between these growing on here without the support structure and some potatoes that are further down the plot. They also are drying out a little bit. They definitely need watering well at this time of year. This is when your potato crop is going to be swelling up. So try to water right at the basis if you, if you can because it's the moisture around the leaves that's gonna increase your risk for blight. But you do need to get on and keeping those potato crops well watered during June if you want to get potatoes of any size. So that's a job that we will be having to look at. Right behind us here, if I go through the nice now gap between the lavender, we have our dahlia border and this is growing quite well. Uh, the structure that we put together, I know it's a little bit haphazard the structure, but it's quite strong. And once the plants grow, you can't really see the supporting structure, but it just means that these plants grow nice and upright. It keeps the flowers really tidy and it maintains a path between where you have a large sort of dahlia border and your vegetable patch. So really pleased with this. They're looking really, really healthy. Behind that, the rhubarb has now really picked up. We haven't actually picked any rhubarb yet, which is quite unusual for us. Because we pulled so many crowns out of this patch this year, it was really, really slow to get started. And then obviously we've had not very much rain, but now it's looking really good. And there are some really large, thick stems of rhubarb on here. If I try and pull one out, just to show you here, this is how good our rhubarb is growing here in South Manchester. Absolutely perfect. Behind the rhubarb, we have some early peas, which we have been picking and enjoying. Um, they're gonna need picking quite soon. They are absolutely lovely. If we have a look at some of these, if we can get this one open, you can see that they are nice, perfect, fresh, garden peas. One good thing about doing these tours is I can go around and have a snack at the same time, which is good. Behind here, we've got the asparagus bed. This didn't do that well, actually. Excuse me. What actually happened with this is we've got lots of cats. I know we've put lots of pictures actually on our, our YouTube and our Facebook about these cats. We love cats and we do encourage them. But one of them took a particular liking to chewing the top of all the fresh asparagus shoots. 
So we only had a really small harvest from this asparagus, despite it being year three. So in theory, our first year to be able to harvest, which was a bit of a disappointment. But it's set all its shoots up now. Some of them, as you can see, have fallen over and they're going to need tying in. But these are actually really pretty plants and pollinators love these tiny flowers that you get on them. So we'll get those tied up and they will do absolutely fine and just look pretty, pretty really for the rest of the season. Fingers crossed we won't have the same problem next year or we'll have to think of another solution. If we have a look at this bed here, you can see how dry the ground is here, even on our no dig beds. There we're going down to where there is a bit of moisture. So there is some moisture underneath, but it's the mulch on the top is very, very dry. We've got some celeria can here and one celeria there had died off because it got so dry. On this bed, um, there's also some coal rob eye which has been covered up because that's the brassica. The pigeons absolutely annihilate any brassica, so that's why it's got the net over. And other than that, there's just a few flowers that are dotted about. Just to, We had spare ones, so I thought it would look nice. Then if we have a look at this pergola, so this was new for this year. Then on this side, we've got a really tiny um, gourd, which I was given from Mothin from my family garden. It's not growing very well, but I think it's just because it's so dry. I do think once it's the, the rain starts, but I know I keep saying this, it, it will pick up. But on the other side, the sweet peas are looking really good. So there's a mixture of different sweet peas. Some of these are going to start to need cutting actually pretty soon but they're climbing really well up this structure. Behind uh, the sweet peas, there is a little bit of an experiment. So these are soya beans or edamani beans. And you know what? They're really loving the heat and are growing really well. I've never grown these before. Lots of people have said that they don't manage good harvest here in the UK, but we'll see what happens. And you can see some little tiny flower buds that are starting there. Other than that on here, the onions are looking really good. They're um, a type of onions called global onions that we've grown quite a bit before and they're looking really healthy. And behind me, hopefully you can see now the difference when you support a potato structure properly. It's one of the downsides of growing in pots. Because you're not earthing up in the same way, you can have sometimes very long stems that need that bit of support. And you can see here that where they're better supported, they grow much, much more in a much more sturdy manner. And then behind us here is the rest of our onions and they are looking absolutely brilliant. Some of the ones at this side here are actually some of the Peter Glazebrook giant onions, the same ones we've got in the polytunnel. And like out here, they're, they're looking better than they do in there. I'm not sure we will grow them again as a general onion because as you can see, some of the leaves will start to flop over because the plants are just so big and that really hinders the growth. But you know what, it's a good experiment and it's all for a bit of fun really, isn't it? Looking behind here, we've got some sweet corn plants that are just starting to grow actually. You can see that the centre growth is taking off. Again, they got very dry and I have put the um, bedding plants in between just to give a little bit of ground cover as they spread out. We've got a few cabbages on here. These are a Savoy type of cabbage. I only actually bought these as an extra because I was buying some other plants and I thought I've not planted any savoy cabbage from seed. So I bought a few little plants. So they're quite small because they've gone in quite late. Now we're really onto the main sort of bean section and on the other plot, there's a lot more beans, but these are really starting to grow now. If you think of last month, if you look back on last month's video, these were tiny, tiny little plants and we're just really taking a long time to start growing. And that's probably because of this dry weather. But now they are starting to grow and they look quite good. So all these beans are different types of beans. A few of them for eating fresh, but the majority of them are for eating dried because we do grow a lot of beans for drying here on our plots. On this side here, we have got, this was meant to be my squash bed, but this is most certainly this one, certainly a courgette. The other ones are um, squash though. It's a bit of an overflow bed here. The squash we had left over. They're starting to grow now and they'll pick up soon too. These squash plants are looking a bit better actually. They've grown a little bit more. So we've got the two squash beds, beds and then on this side, more beans and some heritage climbing beans, a variety called alderman. Right behind me here, 
This is the parsley which I've been letting go to seed. The reason why I've been letting it go to seed is illustrated quite well by this hoverfly that is going around here. Um, so it is really brilliant for pollinators and now you can see that all the yellow flowers have started to come out and open out. So I'm probably not going to let this completely set seed but I wanted to leave it for the bees to get the flowers. We can sow something late in this bed anyway so it's not a waste and you know what I do think it looks pretty nice as well. If we come in and look at here this is actually looking absolutely brilliant. These are our two giant cabbage. So last year we grew some giant cabbage and we only put one in um, these three by six beds. But looking on the giant veg uh, Facebook group, some people suggested that in that size they do actually put two in. So I thought we would do that. And if you look at this, the actual width of this, the leaves is probably about that big already. It's absolutely massive. And they are starting to form some sort of small shape in the middle like they're going to get a heart. So fingers crossed these will do well. They were fertilised really well and they were planted in lots and lots of well rotted horse manure. So fingers crossed they will do good. Behind here we've got the rest of the garlic and as you can see there's a sort of start of little bits of rust um, on these plants. Not too much, this is mainly just sort of yellowing from dieback. So fingers crossed these ones will be better than the ones we planted further down the plot. Let's have a look just behind Anthony and you can see our early potatoes which drastically need a water as you can tell and we will be doing that today. This really shows the difference again between when we plant these potato tubs we tend to try and bury the last couple of inches to cover this bit where the water comes out which means that the plant once you've watered the plant can reaccess that water from the ground. Here for these new ones, we haven't done that. So you can see the difference between how much they're drying out compared to the other potato plants. So we will need to get on and water these really well today. And we are going to harvest some of these just to see how they are getting on in this weather. Then if we go around to the front of the plot, you'll see the flower beds, which you know what, is actually looking pretty good. I'm quite pleased with this. It does look like a perennial flower bed. There's quite a lot of in here. And so that's quite nice. And then behind there, there's a few bedding flowers in that sort of little tower thing. That's really just to cover the front of that storage area that we've got a lot of rabbit bedding and manure in. So that is plot four. And if Anthony comes right to the front, you can see the sort of typical size of a plot which you get in the UK. Uh, this is around 250 square metres. It's about... If you exclude the back bit where the um, summer house is, it's about 100 foot-ish in length, maybe 22, 23 foot in width. So 10 by 25, so that gives you the 250 square metres. So let's go over and we'll look at our last plot, which is 5B. So we are on our last plot, which is 5B, and this is a half plot. This is the newest plot that we've had. This is the start of the third season on this plot. And here we've got one of our experiments for this year, which is a climbing type of plant that is similar to a spinach called Malabar spinach that is used a lot in South Indian um, cuisine, I believe. So they weren't looking too great and I didn't know whether they perhaps completely needed to be in the polytunnel, but they are growing now and I've put this here just to give them a little bit of shelter and obviously they are sheltered by the back of this structure and they're looking all right they're growing so we'll see what happens with those. Other than that on here this is just the manure storage and then we've got a number of raised beds similar to the ones that are on plot four but they're slightly bigger they're about five foot in width rather than four foot and as you can see here this is the general salad bed we've got a few little onions here that was just overflow and then various salad items there's some actually some really nice lettuce behind here if anthony comes and has a look and some quite nice florence fennel and beetroot where i harvested some of the earlier sown lettuce i've just put some perennial spinach in at this end so we tend to try and keep sowing where we can uh, to keep those second crops going so we can be as efficient as we can on the land that we do have. Looking behind here, we have a brassica bed. We have got uh, different types of cabbages in this section. There's some red cabbages and some green cabbages. 
some pointy ones and some large round ones. And then at the back we have the Brussels sprouts, which if Anthony comes and has a look, actually look pretty good here. Again, these are completely netted, really mainly because of pigeons here on this plot. We have a real big problem with pigeons coming in and stripping all the brassicas. But this netting also protects against cabbage white butterflies, which are a pest of anything that is in that brassica group. Behind here, we have another onion bed. So in the back, we have got shallots, which look pretty good, actually. Um, and then there are a few. Uh, these were the overwintering onions. And where it looks here, where they're sort of more like sparsely spread out, that was because I did a bit of an experiment to interplant with lettuce in between the onions, just to see if that made a difference on whether the size of the onion crop and whether we could use that space. You can see a few lettuce that are just left over that are just going to seed. And as you can see, they are, they're not as good as the other onions, but we never tend to, tend to find that our overwintering onions get that big anyway. I'm not sure that I'd do it again because I put some like a oriental brassica lettuce seed mix in and the plants were massive so I do think it overcrowded those onions quite a bit but we have got some so it's always good to keep experimenting in your growing methods. We had a random sunflower come up here so I'm not sure if this has been dropped by a bird or whether it was in the compost that we um, mulched on the surface of our bed but I've left it in because I thought it was nice and it is just starting to form a sunflower on the top so hopefully this isn't going to be too giant here because it's not in the best position but I didn't have the heart to pull this out. Now if you look at the rest of the plot we've got lots and lots more beans here. These ones are dwarf beans and the majority of these are a small type of black Mexican bean that we really quite have enjoyed eating and they found that they're really easy to grow. There's a small wigwam of runner beans. After all the years of growing, we have just decided we only have a small amount of runner beans because even from a tiny wigwam like that, you get so many beans and you'd have to be eating them by the pounds every single day to use them up. So we tend to just have a, a small wigwam which we can eat fresh and we'll leave the last beans on to set seed. There are a, this is a variety that actually has a white bean and they're quite tasty, a bit like a butter bean as well. In the background, we have got more climbing beans on these two beds. You can see some of them look quite small and some of them look bigger. That's because some of these were direct sown as late crops and some of these were started in plugs. Behind me here, we have a few more brassicas. These are um, calabrese, broccoli and um, cauliflowers and they look really quite healthy too. Interestingly here, Again, this is another bit of an experiment. It's falling over, but it doesn't really matter. We've got something that looks a bit like broad beans. Well, these are actually field beans, which should be similar to a broad bean. I actually sowed these as just a tester, really, to make sure this manure, which we got from a new source, didn't, wasn't contaminated with any weed killer. But they grew quite well, and I stuck them in here, and they started to flower, and I thought, well, I'm not going to pull them out. And apparently they are edible. So we will be trying these. There's quite a lot of beans on here. So you never know, maybe next winter we might be growing some field beans because we think they're really tasty. Who knows? There's a few more dwarf sunflowers and some dwarf cosmos here. Really, again, just to fill this area and to look nice. And behind me, I have got uh, beetroot. This is multi-sown beetroot. And right in the background, we have got some purple brock sprouting broccoli which we let go to seed because we wanted to have the flowers and pollinators but I will be also collecting some seed from that and that's another area that we can sow with some fresh seeds at this time of year and behind here we've got more fruits pots again that need a good water as you can see it really is quite hot and windy here today we've got a conference pear tree which is looking brilliant and underneath here we tend to keep a lot of cuttings and again these are looking pretty good these are cuttings from our fig tree. So there's quite a lot of different cuttings underneath this tree. We've got gooseberries, black currants, and also quite a lot of different herbs as well. It tends to be a good area to grow the cuttings because they get a little bit of a shade and shelter from the tree above so they're not kept in completely bright sunlight. The strawberry bed is looking quite nice. It's setting out a lot of runners and I think what I might do is cut off a lot of these runners just so the plants put that energy back into their root systems themselves. And I want to try and keep this bed so it's got gaps between the plants and it's not completely full. So that's a job to do over the next few weeks as well. 
The last thing we've got really around the back of here before we look at the coal frames and the greenhouse is this multi-grafted apple tree. And we've got quite a few videos on our channel about this where when we first took this plot on, there were a number of trees. There was, there was one there as well where the strawberries is, but there was these two trees here. The conference pear we knew was really good and this we knew had not very nice apples on that were some sort of cooking apple. So we decided to completely cut it down to the base and to graft on a number of different apples. There's actually five varieties of apples on this tree and you can see that some of them are setting some quite nice fruit clusters this year, which is great. And the last thing we've got to show you on 5B are these cold frames. There's not much in them now because we have in the main planted up the pots, but there are some leek plants here, which I'm going to prick out and put in modules and they're gonna be planted out very late. There's a couple of tiny little basil plants which might prick up and a lot of lavender on this side that we are gonna plant another lavender border similar to the one that's on plot four, somewhere in the background on this plot here, 5B. And then the very last thing is our greenhouse, which is our chili house. So we have put a separate video on about this. So I'm not gonna spend a long time talking about the chili house, but it is now completely set up and we are in the main using these self watering containers, which was a Christmas present from this year. So it's looking really good in there. It's only just been planted out and those plants, they absolutely love the heat in here and they will pick up really quickly. So if you have enjoyed the tour today, please like, comment and subscribe. It only takes a minute, but it really helps our channel. Bye everyone. Bye.